Right. Okay. Good morning. We have prepared for today uh, quite a large set of slides, but uh, the purpose of the slides itself, so don't panic, it's to ensure that you have some material to take with you uh, that have some information on it. Also, I want to tell you that this session is being recorded. So if you want to listen it, to it afterwards or for people who are not here, uh, it will be made available on our website. So here you have our pictures, Katrien and I, and we together work in the uh, Sandalex standardization team. And I want to kick off with some travel memories or nice pictures of three nice towns. So we have there a picture of Lugano, Dresden and Frankfurt. And probably it rings a bell to most of you. It were the cities where the agreements with IC and uh, Senelec have been signed. So it's now more than 30 years that we have partnerships with IEC. And uh, it's a quite successful partnership because of the Senelec standards, 80% of our standards are aligned on IEC. So they can be identical or they can be modified by amendments, but 80% is really the opportunity to bring the international field in Europe and mm -hmm. reflect it. I hope you know who Senelec is, otherwise you would not be here, I guess. So we are one of the three European standardization organizations, SEN, Senelec and Etsy. You're here at the back office for SEN and Senelec, so not for Etsy. I think Etsy may not have snow today, <laughs> but um, we do have a little bit. So in uh, Senelec, we have uh, 34 members. The members are the national committees of 34 countries. So you have the 27 countries of the European Union. Then uh, you have also the countries that do not belong yet to the European or anymore to the European economic area. Uh, so that are the UK, the Republic of North Macedonia, Serbia and Turkey. And you also have three EFTA countries, which are Iceland, Switzerland, and Norway. All the members of Senelec and Sen are also members of IEC. The main focus of our work at Senelec has always been and will always be that international work comes first. So we will always look at what happens at the international field and see whether there might be need for adaptation at European level. A difference with IEC lays within the implementation of the standards, because in Senelec, the European standards have to be implemented as identical standards by all the members and conflicting national standards have to be withdrawn, which is not the case in IEC. For today, we have uh, five parts. We, we have to cover the whole day. So before the coffee break, I will tell you something on roles and responsibilities of BT, which means the technical board, board technique, hence the inverse abbreviation, technical committees and working groups. Then we will have something on uh, the development of the standards. So from new work item to publication. Then Katrien will inform you on the day-to-day -day management of the Frankfurt Agreement and citation of harmonized standards in the official journal. And then to close, we will have a quick look if there's still time on Senelec Boss, where you find information for doing your work and other useful information. Let's kick off with the roles and responsibility of the technical board, technical committees and the working groups. We have three layers at uh, the technical level. So first you have the technical board. The technical board is the main body responsible for all technical work. So you, if you are from a technical committee, you will report to the technical board and working groups report to technical committees. Uh, so the technical committees uh, decide on the organization of the work, pro of the work program 
they will approve new work items. If you have an interest in, in creating something new, you will need approval from the technical board. Uh, technical committees are set up with a limited uh, scope and they have to define a certain work program, but we'll go in more detail later. And uh, the standards are then finally written in working groups. A big difference between technical committees and working groups for what concerns the participation is that in technical committees, it are the members are the national committees. That means that the delegates who sit around the table, I already said the word, the people who sit around the table representing the national committees are what we call national delegations or delegates. They have to speak on behalf of the national committee. So they have to ensure that whatever they say, contribute, right, reflects the viewpoint that has been agreed upon in their country. In most cases, it is done in the mirror committees, the national mirror committees. In working groups, however, people participate in their personal capacity, so as an expert. Of course, they have to be aware also of the national viewpoint, but they also bring there the expertise that they have gained from their company or from their organization. So for technical committees, we speak about delegates and in working groups, we speak about experts. Now on that slide on the right, you also see uh, working groups that are directly under the technical board. This is a bit a different kind of group, it's also a working group, but they uh, do not write standards, but they give advice to the technical uh, board, they make studies, they uh, investigate policies and so So it's more that level, but for today's session, we will focus on the left side, so TCs and working groups. Let's start with the technical committees, TCs. So a technical committee is set up by the technical board. The composition, there's a TC chairperson, a TC secretary, national delegations, so the national position. Um, those national delegations have voting rights. So when it comes to voting, only national delegations can vote because um, observers, as we call them, that can be the European Commission, that can be Annex 3 organizations, that can be companies who have liaisons with the TC, do not have voting rights. Now, the TC chairperson is appointed by the technical board, but upon nomination from the national committee holding the secretariat of that TC. The TC secretary is appointed by the National Committee also holding the Secretariat. A technical committee, what is its role? So it's responsible for the timely development of deliverables. It has to ensure the timely execution of standardization request deliverables. So also including support when standardization requests are submitted from the European Commission, but we will not go into detail for that because there's a separate session on that. And, and that is mainly a task of the TC chair. He has to ensure, or she has to ensure to always work along the standardization principles of transparency, openness, and consensus building. Now, communication between the chair and the TC secretary is of course vital, but don't forget also to communicate with CCMC because the PM is there to help you. If you have questions or so, don't forget to ask. Uh, we may be able to give you that little push that you need to move forward. The TC secretariat is on top of the TC's work program. That means that he or she knows very well what the TC is doing, which uh, deliverable or future deliverable is at what stage. He ensures that standards are submitted for being submitted to the procedure and so on.
this is a reflection of who can sit around the table in a, a technical committee meeting, whether it's uh, virtual or face-to-face. -face. So you have the TC in the middle. First of all, you have the members, so the delegates from the national committees, and it can be maximum three delegates per national committee. You can have European partners, including Annex 3. I've already mentioned Annex 3 organization twice, but I don't think I've explained what it is, Annex 3 organizations. So Annex 3 organizations are those organizations that are um, this, whose tasks are described in the European legislation for standardization. And there are four such organizations who, according to European legislation, represent the so-called weaker stakeholder in standardization. So that are the consumers, and that organization is called ANEC. We have the environmental interest, and the organization is called ECOS. We have the interest of workers, therefore we have ETUC or E-T-U-E-U-C. And we have the small and medium-sized enterprises, and that organization is called SBS. They can participate in TC meetings, but of course they have no voting right. We can also have in technical committee meetings uh, observers from the IEC, from affiliate of partner standardization bodies, uh, liaison officers from other TCs are welcome to your technical committee meetings and uh, direct participation of someone from the European Commission or from FTAR can also be there, but they all have observer status. And if you want to read more about that observer st status of or the concept of partnership with European organization and other stakeholders, there's more information on Sense and like Guide 25 and there's a link if you want to need more. The presentations will be made available afterwards. Now, some of you may be TC chair or secretary. So what are your different tasks? So the TC chairperson is appointed by the Senelec Technical Board upon nomination of the National Committee holding the secretariat, while the TC secretary is appointed directly by the National Committee holding the secretariat. So there's a difference. Uh, the chairperson needs approval from the technical board. For the secretary, that's not necessary. Then the TC chairman has to be neutral. So he has to divest himself from anything that has been said at national level because he needs to take into account the views of everyone who participates. Um, it's not mentioned for TC secretary, but it applies for TC secretary also. He, also, <laughs> he or she also has to be neutral. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it will be for next year's session that we'll add it. <laughs> Uh, the chairperson presides meetings, of course, and seeks consensus, which is not always very easy because you see there a consensus. What is it? You see six post-its, a general agreement. There has to be an absence of sustained opposition. It has to take into account the views of all parties, uh, focus on key issues, conciliation of conflicting arguments, and he has the concerned interest that's room for interpretation. Is it he has to take care of everyone's interest and find a acceptable way forward? Uh, the chairperson uh, discusses or interfaces with CCMC for strategic directions or specific <laughs> issues. Um, and ensures the coordination with other TCs. And now if we jump back to the TC secretary, he or she has to ensure that the TC works efficiently and within timelines. Timelines, timeliness has been mentioned already several times because it's important that we do not take 20 years to develop a standard. Uh, so we have to watch our target dates. The secretary prepares and distributes documents via the IT tool. So the main tools for Senelec are the collaboration platform and the CIV platform. So committee internal vote um, that are your uh, disposal. 
The Secretary has to be aware of the relevant Senelec BT decisions and provide inputs when needed. So uh, you will see later that after every meeting that a TC has, there has to be a report to the technical board. And that has also a target date. So within eight weeks, the report must be provided. And uh, But on the other way, uh, the technical board can also have questions for the TC. So if CCMC addresses you with a specific question for the TC, please reply. And within a rather short time frame, and you have to be aware of what BT decides on a more horizontal level and communicate those decisions within your technical committee. Because we from CCMC, we communicate those decisions to the TCs, but not to individuals. So we address the chairman and the secretary, but please forward them within your TC. The secretary also ensures the coordination with other technical committees and in case of standardization requests, so from the European Commission, uh, he or she is respons responsible for preparing the reports. And this one is the show, this one we are talking about coordination with the CCC, but if we have coordination with the, all the standards, for example, we have to do some particular liaison. Yes. It's something that we I think, are the liaisons covered in a later session? Mm. No. Um, if you have to cooperate for a specific standard, there is the possibility to have a liaison with TCs. So one organization appoints a liaison officer who then participates in the TC meetings. Um, I believe we haven't mentioned how we will work on uh, questions and answer sessions. It's okay to have a question now, but since we have five sessions, if possible, unless you have a really urgent question, ask it maybe after the closure of every session, then we have kind of questions and answers, then because otherwise it's easier for uh, the speakers. So switch back to technical committee meetings. What has to be done if there's a technical committee meeting? Before every plenary meeting, the secretary has to circulate the agenda two months before the meeting and documents for discussion four weeks before the meeting. There are templates on BOSS. BOSS is the business operating system or something like that, but it's it's a, it's a website on the Sen and Senelec uh, websites. It's our pages where you have information on everything. You find there the internal regulations, you find their templates, you find, find their guidance, you find there the roles of technical committee meetings. So if you look for something, you will find it there. There's also in bold new normal. What is the new normal? It's a guidance document that explains how you mm -hmm. could best manage a meeting, whether it is a face-to-face -face meeting or a hybrid meeting or a completely virtual meeting. Because each meeting has a different approach, a, diff a different modus vivendi, and that is written in the guidelines. Also, before the plenary meeting, the TC secretary at least should look at the work program that is available in projects online. Does any, everyone know what projects online is? Otherwise I quickly jump to it. If you have to. I'll jump to it. Sorry, I was have the bad habit of going mm -hmm. via the I'll do it the formal way. So you go to the Sen Senelec website, you accept the cookies. You see here my expert area, Senelec expert area. You accept the cookies. And now I need to look for it because I always go via the shortcut. Here you have projects online. You have a choice of uh, identities with which you can connect. Uh, so I ch choose the Senelec one. You may have an IC possibility also, but I only have a Senelec uh, account. 
So I click yes. Oops. Oops, sorry, yeah, different keyboard. Sorry, I'm But I have no idea anymore with my password. I think we need to do it with with else's little Nope. Yeah, no, no, no. Someone logged in. From the very beginning, from the center of entry stuff, but I don't find it. I have a bookmark, but it's no longer that. It's good. Yeah. Oops, an <laughs> error occurred. <laughs> um, what we'll do, we'll open it uh, during the coffee break and we'll show it then. That might be the best because we have uh, problems with passwords. This happens when these computers are only for presentations and we have our own computers, but we'll do it after the coffee break. There is something called Projects Online that is the, the database that is acceptable to you all, where you can find information on your technical committee, you can find your scope there, you can find your work program, uh, you can find at what stage every deliverable that you are preparing is, you can find information on how your deliverables are linked to legislation you can find the name of the your project manager and a lot of information then um, also a small reminder that there is an eras attendance list to be used and eras means exploitation rights assignment sheet or something something like that so if you have a meeting make sure that it's the correct uh, attendance list that is sound. Whoops. After your plenary meeting, please do not forget to prepare a report to be sent to CCMC, and you have the link there at Data Service, within eight weeks, so that CCMC can circulate your report to BT, uh, because it needs approval from BT. Now, it should not be a lot of work to prepare a report to BT because, and there is a template on POS, mm -hmm. I'll show you, uh, because that report, the headings, follow exactly the same structure as the agenda for your meeting, for which you also have a, a template on BOSS. So it should not be too complicated, please, Use the existing templates and don't invent your own report. Uh, there's also a plea for the use of the committee internal voting uh, platform. So it's an IT tool available on Senlec voting portal, providing the possibility for TC secretaries to launch ballots within your TC for any kind of consultation, whether it's formal or informal. Now, I would like to go to BOSS. I hope it works. 
This is such an annoying keyboard. Voilà. BOSS is the business operations support system. You can subscribe if you want notifications if there's something new on BOSS. So if you haven't done so, please do, because, for example, the, there was an update regarding inquiries on the 1st of December. So if you, haven't, if you have subscribed, you will have received a notification. If not, it, maybe it's a time for uh, subscribing. What I wanted to show you is in the reference material, where you have forms and templates. You have here the technical body organization, where you have, for example, an agenda for the meetings. And you also have the template, the TC report to BT. Oops. So this is the kind of form that we would like to receive from the TC secretary within eight weeks after the meeting. So you indicate the TC, the title, you give some information on statistics. Don't panic too much if you don't know it exactly, how many current active parallel projects you have, because we know at CCMC. So if you don't have that figure, we have it. You need to give information regarding meetings. So when did you last uh, submit your report? You have to tell us when your next meeting will be held so that we are prepared also for your meeting and where it is. And then you have the same titles as you have in the agenda. So approval of the agenda, approval of the report of the previous meeting, relevant BT decisions since the last meeting. Then you have information on your business plan, whether you did something with your business plan in the meeting, did you modify it? And if yes, you will have to attach it. Where do you plan to modify it? Then mm, item seven is quite an interesting uh, part also because it asks you for the systematic review of standards. What is a systematic review? A European standard is to be reviewed every five years. So from a, a bit after four years, you will start getting notifications from CCMC saying that, hey, you need to review your standard. So in your TC, you will be asked to have a discussion whether that standard that is about to become five years old is still state of the art and hence can be confirmed or whether it is old and can be withdrawn or whether uh, it needs to be revised. But be careful if the standard needs to be revised. A standard under systematic review is not revised by ways of an amendment. A complete revision is then needed, so you have a standard with a new year. Mm -hmm. But I see someone saying, oh, don't panic because you can confirm the standard. But if you say we need to revise it, it's a new edition. Also, you have to give information on liaisons and then some other questions or remarks from the secretariat. So that is this. It um, means there's no way to have just an amendment. It's always no, you can make amendments, can but it. Confirm the standard? Yes, yes. You can confirm the standard and make an amendment. Strange statement. Mm -hmm. Not from you, but uh, <laughs> as a committee to say uh, we confirm it, but we change it. Yeah, but because with a change, a new edition means it's bigger than just an amendment. Yeah. An amendment is not the whole standard, but if you think that the whole standard is up, you need to make a revision. Yeah, so it's something like confirmed in principle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it confirmed. If adapted, small changes. Yeah. 
Can I ask something? Yeah, sure. Uh, normally, I receive an alert list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the alert list, I see which standard is older than five yes, years and yes. has to be revised. Yes. Then I start within my uh, TC uh, a call for expert convener, start a working group, and so on. And we go on and work on the new edition, for example. Yeah. Um, at the same time, can I uh, say that uh, this, the original standard, which has to be alerted, is prolonged for uh, yes. a certain yeah. way, a certain time, yeah. or how can I handle it? Because I got all the standards again and yeah. again yeah, yeah, in my yeah. alert list. That's why we have this point in the... Uh, TC report to BT. So here the say the TC decides to revise the following standards and will request a new work item. So then we know you will revise it. We make a switch in the database. The alerts should stop. And we are waiting when you ask for a new work item. But it appears always on the new alert list and uh, uh, at the uh, right column, I see it's under revision and and so on and so on. It's noted what what goes on, but it's on the list I get every month. Okay, and did you register a new work item already? That yeah. says that is a revision for that. Yeah. Then we need to look at it. Maybe I can show. Yeah, it. yeah, no, yeah. oh, send it. Put it in an email, please. That example with the project number and. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Because that is something important. If you communicate on projects with CCMC, please be as complete as possible. Don't say, I have a question on EN12345. If you have a series of 30 standards with that number, so give 12345, the year, the project number, that's helpful for us. Thank you. Then, when you have prepared your report to the technical board, at a certain point in time, it arrives at the desk of our colleagues from the database, and it arrives at the desk of the project managers, who will then look at your documents and uh, prepare what we call the cover sheet to your document, where we have a specific structure, also a template to fill in the information to BT and add whatever is necessary. For example, if you mention EN 12345, we will add that it's the edition of 2022 and that it has project number 789. Uh, so also for the revision of standards, you will see here the topic systematic review of standards and we add that information. Then we go one layer down and we come to the layer of the working groups. A working group is established by the technical committee for a short term task. So in most cases is there is a new work item, a standard needs to be written. So you set up a working group to uh, write that standard. You will appoint a convener. And you will have in your group experts, so no uh, delegations, but individual experts, but they have to be appointed by the national committees also. The working group is responsible for the drafting of the deliverables, and they have to send it to the technical committee for then checking, and because they manage the work program for discussion, because in the end, it will be the technical committee who submits your draft, working group draft, to the procedures. You would seek support from the parent body to do so, to submit it to the procedures. Um, if you are a convener of your working group, uh, you have to ensure also that everyone knows the rules and procedures to work around the table, but that's also a task of the national committees to ensure that their experts knew the rules and the procedures. And uh, of course, it would be very helpful and even necessary that the working group experts, even if they act in personal capacity, that they know the situation at national level, 
because it is no use to write a standard, a draft standard, which will then be sent to the procedures where you have no nearly for 100% sure in advance that it will not be approved by the members. So it's very useful if you take into account the national situations also. And you regularly have to report on your progress of work to your techni parent technical committee. Um, something on the code of conduct. I'm just saying that. Uh, ah, yeah. A working group normally is disbanded when the deliverable is ready and there is no need for the working group, then it is disbanded. I've seen in uh, several meetings, and I do uh, value that is when the convener or the chair opens the meeting, that he reminds participants of the code of conduct uh, that you will find also on the boss pages, so that everyone knows how to act in the meetings, but especially that they are aware of the policy on patents and the provisions regarding competition law. And you will also find uh, some uh, best practices for improving the effectiveness of uh, working group meetings where you have the links so that there are advice and suggestions to working group conveners on what should be done before, during and after meetings. Questions, yes. Uh, I will not touch on joint no. working groups. Is it for tomorrow or later today? Do you have a specific question yeah. on uh, joint? It works. Is it like uh, in uh, AC? There is a uh, technical committee in chair contract management? You mean a joint working group between the technical committees? Yes. That's what you mean, yeah. So in principle, there is no more joint working group between technical committees. We do not establish them anymore. Why? It's because we. it's difficult in terms of uh, management of the standard. So we have a technical committee establishing a working group with full party or with participation of another technical committee's experts. But we keep the lead in one technical committee. And this is, of course, to be agreed between the two, I mean, two different, uh, the two different technical committees. But as such, we do not establish any more joint working group between TCs. There are still some remaining in our database, huh? mm -hmm. but we try to avoid, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I believe you were first. Mm -hmm. No, no, uh, just to show you what, what is, how is managed readership of a working group? Who is responsible of a working group who manage report and so on? In a working group, you have the working group convener who convenes the meeting and who is in fact leading the whole group. And in most cases, it will also be him who makes the, ensures the drafting of the standard, who is the communication with the technical committee. But in some cases, the convener asks for support from an assistant secretary. And that's amongst them then how they participate, or they uh, divide the tasks. Is he nominated? A convener is nominated by the parent technical committee. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there is a, there is a call first on the uh, it's then after the working the technical committee decides that to nominate. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. The, the policy of not establishing joint working groups between technical committees, does this also apply for uh, technical committees in Senelec and CEN? No. no, no. Between CEN and CENELEC, we can have joint technical committee. Well, so joint working groups. 
Yeah. In principle, not. It's a question of uh, each, it, because if you establish a join, there is no lead. Yeah. And we need to have a lead. It's a, also a database yeah, issue. Yeah. yeah, so in, now in principle, we, we, we do not have, we do not establish any more joint working group between even sent and select technical committees. Right. But I thought the question was about joint technical committees, and I will jump on that. So we establish joint technical committees between sent and sent elect, but here again, there is a lead, and the lead is according to the work item. I'm speaking about I'm looking at you because <laughs> you will be following GTC, uh, yeah, GTC uh -huh. 10. Um, so, and but we established joint, joint technical committee between science on topic of joint interest, but here one organization has the secretariat and uh, the work item, I mean, and there is a lead at the level of the work item, but I can go maybe after this session on that. More questions? Oui. Um, just on the project online, I just wondered why the responsibility lies for updating the project online as a, a national secretary following mirroring a lot of the work in in, in Senate. I'm just wondering, is that from the the secretariat um, in PCMP or is that of the TC um, uh, conveners um, to update the project online? You see later that Ingrid will uh, explain the new work item sheet, but the uh... Management of the work program, including, of course, the Infant Projects Online, because it's the work program, is the responsibility of the TC secretary. So if they, if they spot something wrong, shouldn't be the case. Uh, but let's imagine uh, yeah, something, I don't know, a link with a directive and so on. It's up to the technical committee secretary to, to tell us what is what should what needs to be updated. Of course we will update everything related to procedure if a document enters to uh, I mean to I mean in CCMC and is to proceed to inquiry or to formal vote, we will update that. But the basic info, the scope, the title, the link with anything else, it's to to the, um, the TC secretary to update. I mean to keep an eye on. Although it's a little bit of this uh, so the TC Secretary has to have been the CMC to change the date in Project Online. Okay, because usually I see with Project Online the planning, the implementation, but for example, for the one change option or nine more tolerance, it's not always in Project Online. I talk about the working group or the type of law. So where when there is a, a new project uh, for external draft turned out to be to be made, so who, who is uh, responsible to give the, the information to be filled in projects? We'll see that I mean yeah. in the next slide. But the point is that when the technical committee decides to launch a new project, they will fill a new work item sheet, mm -hmm. and in select like any new work item is to be approved by the technical board. So you will have to tell us. And then it will be approved by the technical board, and then it means that we have the info and that we will encode it in the data. Okay, so it's the TCMC who will fill the, the, yeah, the project yeah, online. Yeah, we, if it's incomplete or it's not. I will tell you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So for the database, you tell us what we have to do. We check, we tell you if it's done or not done or not or not correct. But it's CCMC who updates the database upon information that we receive from the technical committees. So the information that you could receive, uh, you could receive are coming from the UC secretary yes. or yes. from the convener of the working group? Yeah. Most of the information we will receive from the report to the technical board, mm -hmm. where you have a lot of topics that you need to report on. So many information we get from that. But information can also be a TC secretary who contacts CCMC and says, hmm, we will not be ready by the target date for submitting our document to inquiry. Can we have a bit more time? Mm -hmm. And then we can do it and then CCMC will update the database and we will let you know whether yes, you can, it is allowed or no, it is not allowed because you already asked for a prolongation four times. And we cannot go until eternity. So as a convener, as a point, if I know that some information are not uh, complete, I have to tell to the yes. PC secretary who will get in touch with CCM. Yes, for example, yes. Okay. Okay. You talked about the program there, but 
quite often in the committee that I, I'm involved with, the documents are all prepared in IEC. Yeah. So if they don't yes, progress it quickly enough, it impacts on the CELAC side. Yeah. Maybe it will be covered uh, okay. a bit later. Sorry to, to just go back. I, I rely on projects online quite a lot for my information. So um, if I look at some of the committees that I'm following, and so for example, I've got one there where the um, adjusted plan is that things should have happened in January 2023. So which is obviously long off for now in December mm -hmm. 2023. So for me, to is it the secretary of the TC that I need to contact to ask them to update the information on projects online so that we know when the actual plan is going to happen. You should, if I may use the word, you should tell the secretary to get in ton contact with the project manager to give the information on what needs to be done. Okay, shall we go on? Second part of this presentation is from new work item and WI to publication. Uh, just maybe you've also heard about PWI, which is a preliminary work item, which is a stage before the new work item, which is in fact only the registration of possibly some future work that the TC will undertake, but that has not been formally approved by the technical board yet. It's just entered in the database with an intention that the TC will ask for an activation of that preliminary work item at least three years after the preliminary work item has been registered in the database. Okay? But for this, we will start since the preliminary work item is not an official step in the standards development process, we will start from the new work item here. So from new work item to publication. There are several deliverables. Our flagship is, of course, the European standard. We also have other deliverables, the technical specifications and the technical report. Big secret, no big secret. Tomorrow you will hear more about what is the technical specification and what is the technical report. And then there's also a Senelec or a Sen workshop agreement, which is in fact an agreement that between parties that has been approved under Sen or Senelec and that is made available. But also, at least I will not talk about CWAs today unless. I think I may one have slide. one slide. Well, one <laughs> I will talk a bit about the CW. Standards developments. So in Senelec, we have two routes. We have the parallel EN-IEC standards and we have homegrown standards, so purely European work. Parallel EN-IEC standards. I think I should not ask you what agreement we have for that with IEC. It's called the Frankfurt Agreement. <clears throat> Both in IEC and Senelec, we have a, a similar standards development process, which starts with a proposal, an evaluation, and a decision on whether the topic is relevant for being standardized. We have drafting and consensus building, a public inquiry, consideration of comments, approval of the standard, and we have the publication of the standard. Personally, I would have added one bullet, which would be the implementation of the standard, so the national implementation. Well, it's not because IC does not have it. <laughs> Let's look first at the parallel development of standards, so parallel with IC. You see on your left the steps at IEC, and you see on the right steps at Senelec, and they follow the same route. So when IEC starts a new work item, so an NP or an NR, IEC has the capability to register that also in the Senelec database. So it is well possible that at a certain time, there is an amendment that IEC is developing that appears in your work program. That is possible. 
you don't need BT approval for starting a new work item that is originated by IEC. The Frankfurt Agreement covers that when IEC starts a work program, we can go in parallel. Hmm? So when IEC starts work, we start the parallel work. Then IEC, can I just go through this? IEC has their committee draft and the TC is consulted or should be aware because the TC should follow the activities at IEC that something is coming. And in many cases, they will already know whether the standard would be okay for Europe or whether we would need some kind of uh, an annex or amendment to the IEC document. IEC launches the committee draft for vote and we go in parallel vote on the CDV or we also call that the public inquiry. Next step for IEC is FDIS if they go to FDIS and we have what we call the parallel vote on FDIS or also called the formal vote. In IEC you will have an international standard while in Senelec, you will have the standard, if it's uh, identical, it's EN-IEC. And if it's an amendment, it's EN-IEC-A1. Why is that the X? A1X is if it's um, a homegrown amendment. No, sorry. No. So the numbering of amendments in Senelec that we have it, so if... If your European amendment is identical to the IEC amendment, you will have the numbers A1, A2, A3. If in Senelec the European amendment is homegrown, so made in Europe, you will have the mm -hmm. amendments A11, A12, A13. For homegrown standards. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I take your question too. It's about the, the past process because mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the parallel procedure, there is a big step which is the access system. We'll have a full uh, afternoon session. Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Right. Yes, thank you. Um, the work item uh, automatically created in the Tenelec uh, work program. Mm -hmm. When does this happen and by whose initiative? This is IEC who does it. So there are batches of information, communication between databases. And uh, so if IEC pulls the switch, it is put into a database. Upon approval of the IEC. Um... It's IEC who does it. And everything is going in parallel unless it is exempted. At European level, and but, the exemption is. But there's no parallel vote on new work item proposals, or is it? No, 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 but no, indeed, the the the, the parallel vote is only uh, at the level of the. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, once again, <laughs> it's then IEC's central office who enters those approved new work items in the Senelec database. Yes. Okay. And then we have the, um, I'm looking for the word, huh? understanding is not the correct word, but I don't find, we have the understanding that because you did not say that you don't want that standard in your portfolio, that you go in parallel too. So IEC creates a new work item and it's in your database and you can start. So the document will be submitted to a parallel inquiry, parallel vote. Yes, so parallel vote on new work item. No, not on new work item, inquiry and vote. Yes, but well, let's understand. The new work item is there. IEC has given it to you and it's there. And you don't need approval. Yeah, that's good news. Thank you. <laughs> if it's... It was, it remained a mystery. How does this come into uh, yeah. to, to European knowledge when, yeah. the, uh, when the parallel vote starts on an at, at inquiry? Yeah. 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 It, it should not come as a surprise in Senelec because TC chairs, secretaries, delegates often work at IEC level too. Yeah. So I hope <laughs> that they are aware of what IEC is doing and I hope they are aware that within short, that topic will come into their portfolio. 
uh, and often it are the same people who sit around the table at IEC and in Senate again. Mm -hmm. yeah? Sorry, uh, to ask question. Um, when uh, a work is starting, for example, uh, that the, the CD will be circulated at IEC level, now it's better to, to launch a process also for us assessment at CD level. So also we have to initiate all the documents and, mm -hmm. and so on, mm -hmm. uh, the checklist, uh, mm -hmm. everything, the, the whole batch. Mm -hmm. So we need to make some specific uh, meeting. Uh, and then after this is submitted to the secretary. And who is, uh, in fact, uh, who is submitting the, all the documents uh, for assessment? Is the secretary of the CC? CC secretary to us, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so he is responsible for oui. The, oui. the proper yeah. circulation, the proper... With the, the, all the, element, the, Europe, well, the European elements needs to be provided to us by the select CC secretary. And can it happen that uh, there is a, uh, a... A discrepancy in the timing. Yeah, in the timing. You, I will show you, I believe, this afternoon, uh, how to... So it can be in Europe. Yeah, yeah, but then you need to, I mean, if, I don't know whether it's in the next slide or Sorry not. Sorry to open this. No, no, but uh, uh, if, yeah, in fact, no, it's there. The point is that, but maybe I will, I will mention that this afternoon, if there is a discrepancy in the timing, and if you, we cannot have all the European elements before the CDV, mm -hmm. you need to create common modifications. A new work item for common modifications, which are in fact the modification to the IEC text. And it's a bit complex, huh? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, we discuss the subject in the TC, in the technical committee in IEC. Which standard do we want to have in parallel vote? Yes or no? We ask the national committee. Mm -hmm. And if the national committee decides, not to go for a parallel vote, then this number goes to the exception, yeah, list, exemption, exemption. which means the standard will be uh, published in IEC only. only. Mm -hmm. this, this is the way. Um, if you have a question of uh, discussing about this uh, parallel vote, do I have some example of uh, standards which are exempted from parallel vote? So we have the IEC version and then we have the the EN version, which are not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we, we had some, um, the, the, in fact, uh, Senelec mm -hmm. sent a document to IEC saying there is an ongoing war uh, in, uh, in EN, so please, uh, Mr. IEC, uh, take it uh, into consideration. Uh, so is it, uh, are we going to speak about that? About yes. This process? yes, it's in this, the afternoon session uh, yeah. because sometimes indeed we send back the, the European text to IEC and then up to them to decide whether they will take it or not at IEC level so that we have only one standard. So this is CCNC with the same? Oui, oui, oui. Yeah. Okay. It's coming later, so believe me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, yeah. thank you. Yeah, no problem. For most of the session. A short response, if I may. We, we don't discuss European methods in IEC because at IEC level, um, let's say, IEC also suffers from the prejudice that it is a European club based in Geneva. <laughs> so we keep a very low profile of European methods in IEC because mm -hmm. Americans and Japanese don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I account for that because in TC116, at IEC level, we have discussed European requirements. US requirements, et cetera. And where we cannot agree to include them as normative text, we actually include them as notes. Yeah. So we say, note, in USA and Canada, this applies. Note, in Europe, this applies. So there are additions. And then that flags up another question to my, myself, to yourself. When you have those situations, and obviously you have to convert those notes into the normative text for the EN, does that go down as an A1 or an A11? If it is a European amendment, it will be an A11. A11. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think but there are two, two possibilities. If you add it on the IEC level, then it belongs to the IEC standard. If you put it afterwards in the mirror committee on the European level, then it's an European additional one. It's a common modification, yep. so-called. 
and then it's A11 mm -hmm. before it's a simple IC1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can, yeah, maybe we can go on to that's something for the coffee. Yeah, Let's look at the homegrown standards. <laughs> Uh, so where does it start? There has to be a proposal. Proposals can originate from several. It can come from the technical committee itself. It can be the European Commission who asks for the standards or an agency from the European Commission. It can come from the national committee or it can come from a, a partner organization. In any case, the proposal comes from somewhere and it needs to be submitted to Senelec, the organization Senelec. What will happen with such a proposal? Senelec will evaluate the proposal. Mm -hmm. And with Senelec, I always mean the members of Senelec, because not CCMC, we are the secretariat, but Senelec itself. And the proposal will be evaluated whether there is indeed a need for such a topic. And one of the measures that can be used to evaluate the need for the topic is the fact that there are five countries interested in uh, developing the standard or not. That's why uh, you are asked if we have a new work item proposal, which countries and whether you have at least five countries that are interested in doing the work. Because if only one national committee is interested in such a standard, should we have a European standard? Hmm? Uh, it is also checked on the feasibility for making a standard. Resources, also important. Uh, national legislation has to be taken into account. Do we need aid deviations? And if it's a harmonized standard, what will we do? And we will also check whether that topic might already exist in another TC's work program. If not at Senelec, maybe at Sen. So all things to be decided. Then there will be a decision within your technical committee whether you will ask for a new work item already, so whether you will have it approved by the technical board or whether you will just register it in the database without having it formally started. So the clock does not yet tick when you have a preliminary work item, but it does tick when you have a new work item. And it doesn't really tick. You have three years before it starts ticking. So a uh, new project. What I'm going to tell you now is um, the present practice, but there is a, a project ongoing that to completely change <laughs> the way that TCs submit a new work item request, because up to now it is with a template that you can find on BOSS and with an email, but we will have it more delegated to technical committees and you will receive like a, an IT tool for doing so. And that will most probably be beginning of February, end of February, something like that. But for now, it is mandatory to fill in a template that you find on BOSS. And one of the questions that that template says, uh, so if you want to new, start new work, do you offer it to IEC or not? And sometimes there's a misunderstanding between in technical committees because every work is offered to IEC. But the difference is in when you offer it to IEC. So when your TC decides to start working on a new work item, you can ask immediately to IEC, do you want to do the work or not? And if IEC says yes, then you give everything you have to IEC and IEC does the work. This is why you need to justify it not offering to IEC, which can be, for example, we have to make an amendment because of European legislation. Okay? That can be a reason, or we are preparing an amendment to the purely homegrown standards. Can be a reason for not offering to IEC. But do not forget, here we are talking at a new work item level. Once your amendment or your standard will be finalized and published, we will by default offer it to IEC as a European work item. So it's not because you say at new work item level, no, we don't want it to give it to IEC, that IEC does not get it. Once the standard is published, they get it anyway. And they can do with it, they can take it, they consider it at a technical committee. It depends on TC per TC, but they have everything that Senelec makes homegrown. 
for a new work item, we need as precise information as possible. So if your future EM super supersedes another one, tell us, put okay. it in the form, give the link with IEC, possible A deviations, link with regulation. They're also uh, give information on who are the five members. So national committees, not people, national committees committed to actively participate to develop the standard. Target dates are important, especially we need to know when you intend your draft to be sub ready for submission to inquiry and to vote. The template needs to be sent to data service. Then you will have to wait for the BT decision by correspondence. So normally BT takes one month to for any decision by correspondence. So within one month later, you will know whether your new work item is approved or not. And if approved, there will be standstill. So standstill is an important element also. It means that national committees cannot do anything that would harm the future standardization and that they cannot develop national standards that might be in conflict with the project you are working on. And the new work item will be registered in your work program. You have to respect the timetable. And if you do not, we send you an alert. And if you do not listen to CCMC anyway, we will cancel your project. Then there's a creation of a new work item. So I say cancel your project, but you can always ask another one. So it's not so traumatic. <laughs> This is what the form looks like for the creation of a new work item. As I say, it's the present situation. So it's mandatory for you to send it to CCMC. Uh, in the beginning, you have uh, information on the TC, uh, the TC title, the who has the secretariat, national committee, the English title. If you have the French and German, that would be nice. And you write the scope, what it's about. Um, so this is what I said, as of February, we will have a tool to do that. So it will be a bit different, but it's only uh, right approval to become ENs. Okay, yep. Then we will look at the, what they call flexible standards development process. So the time that you have to develop your standards is 68 weeks can be split into parts because you can have a part before your inquiry and you can have a part before your vote. But the maximum is 68 weeks with some extensions possible. Hmm? So this is for homegrown only? Yes, only no, homegrown. I'm only talking about the homegrown now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so the TC needs to define what target dates they will have. So they have to tell us when you fill in your form that you want to start working on a new work item, when you think the draft will be ready for inquiry. Now, some people send the document and say, we already have the draft. So we they fill in the date of today, which is not okay for us because we also need to do a bit of work at CCMC. So it's minimum one week. And the target date for dispatch of the formal vote, a minimum six weeks. But for the rest, you can uh, divide as long as you do not exceed the 68 weeks. Then there's also a target date for the dispatch of the first working draft, so the CD, but that one is automatically set. Uh, don't worry too much. It's half of the time of plan for inquiry. Don't worry about that. Only one small thing. Never expect if you fill in a form that it will start the next day, because first you will need BT approval, which is in any case four weeks. This is the timeline of the flexible standards development. So the time that you have is in the dark blue, and that is the zones A and E, which cannot exceed the 68 weeks. So you can have a short A before the inquiry and a longer time before the vote or the inverse. Then you see in light blue internal process, and you might think, well, that's long. It's five weeks and eight weeks before the uh, inquiry, that is because CCMC does the editing of your documents. 
And we also have to ensure that the drafts are translated into French and German. So there's communication uh, with the French and German national committees to translate the texts. And then, of course, there's the procedures itself, which also takes time. And so draft process is uh, within this frame? Yes. Yes, it's within this frame, and Catherine will, will explain it's this. within this frame, yes. Okay. Let's explain. okay. Um, so the flexible standards is only applicable for homegrown standards, and you will have some information. We have a YouTube channel, and there you have information on different steps. So an introduction, planning, implementation, implementing the planning, the monitoring, and the review of the planning. So I don't have to go into detail today because time is ticking. Uh, this is about the target date. So. It's mentioned the first working draft, inquiry draft, and formal vote draft. This is an extract also of the template for the new work writer approval form. So here it shows that you have to indicate the dates in weeks. So when does your project start? This will never be today, but it will always be at the decision of the BT who approves your document. And then we start counting. Yeah. Uh, Enquiry, give us a date of uh, how much weeks after the approval of BT, but preferably give weeks than say the 1st of April or something. And formal vote also give us a few weeks. And why is it easy to give in few weeks? Because if I go back to here, so I'm back in uh, San Senelec. My expert area, Senelec expert area. Here you have a nice tool. Yeah. I skipped it. Calculator. Yeah, I'm looking for the calculator. Yeah, it's the last, uh, no. flexible. Ah, flexible time calculator, yeah. So here you can use this tool to calculate the times that you have, and then you have dates when you will have your formal vote launched and when you will have the outcome of the formal vote. After the chief approval, everything is in the project. Yeah. Yes, it's in the project also, but sometimes before you ask for the approval of a new work item, it is nice to know by when you will have your so you can use it if you want. Then, if for some reason, the time that you asked BT or that you told BT, you will be able to develop your standards with certain time and you do not meet the target dates, there's always the possibility to ask for a one change option. For example, you need more time for the inquiry. And you think that then maybe you need less time for the formal vote, ask to change it. Hmm? Or otherwise, ask for a nine-month tolerance. So an extension of your target dates with nine months. Uh, the first time is a TC secretariat request. The second time that you ask for the last to uh, second tolerance is also the last time that you can ask for a, a tolerance. That may be exceptionally granted if you have a TC decision and it needs approval from BT. But we advise that you see for uh, the one change option first, and then if needed, ask for a tolerance. Then your project is submitted to inquiry. So the TC submits a draft with the IT tool, submits it to CCMC. CCMC does the necessary preparation for the editing of the document. Then they ask the German and French National Committee for the translations. Then there is the public inquiry itself, which is 12 weeks. After that, the public inquiry results are known and shared. And CCMC collects also the comments that we have received, including comments of the Haas consultants, if any, but Katrin will tell you. And uh, then it is the slides are dispatched to TC, but communication from CCMC is only to the secretary or and copy to the chair 
Uh, so it's up to the secretary to dispatch it to the DC then, in fact. No. Uh, do you think that in the future will be related with the factor related to the translation of French? There has been discussions already for translations, um, whether the time, but that is what it is now. So in future, I don't know. I don't know. From time to time, there's discussion again on this, but. So the TC considers the comments. And if your document has passed the inquiry with a 71% positive weighted vote and simple majority and a positive consultant's assessment, then the TC can decide to skip the formal vote. You're not obliged, but you can decide it. Yeah? And such a decision is done by simple majority with the TC. And then your document goes directly to your publication, but you have to bear in mind that it, uh, CCMC will only ensure that the editorial comments are taken into account. So no technical changes are allowed. Uh, with regard to the inquiry draft, if there would be proposals for technical changes, it will be for the next edition. If your inquiry document did not meet the criteria for skipping the formal vote, so it was uh, it hasn't had uh, the 71% uh, uh, weights or a, a negative consultant's assessment, then you will have to keep the formal vote. So you will update, improve, modify your draft and make it ready to submit to formal vote, and uh, which also includes a house assessment procedure. And then when it passes the formal vote positively, then your document can be published. Six more minutes. Then your document will be approved. Uh, CCMC will do the final checking and editing. Uh, this is the formal vote. Uh, formal vote will be launched. And the national committees will express their views. Okay. These are the weighings for the vote for the approval of European standards. There's also a simulation tool available on the Senelec website, so the same. So again, again in the Senelec expert area, there's a voting data online vote calculator. So if you want to try it on, I know that some secretary and chair do it and they think oh, Austria might might vote like this. And they try it. That's what the tool is for. Sometimes you find that national committees vote positive even though they then submit technical comments. That's really, I mean, I think could I they think. really be voting negative if they've got technical comments? Because if you go then over the 71% and you've got technical comments, do you deal with the technical comments or do you say, okay, I can skip? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the $1 million question. Huh? If they do have technical comments at inquiry, you would advise them to vote negative. Huh? Yeah. Because there's a risk that then their comments will not be in included. So, but that's a um, voting behavior. Right? So, yeah. I know, I know. Take care of all technical comments regardless of the vote. I mean, they usually vote positive because people vote yeah. even if they vote negative. That's true. Yeah. So, you see those comments equal regardless of the vote. That's what we have done. Mm -hmm. But ideally, if we've got a technical comment, my view is that it should have been voted negative mm -hmm. because you're not agreeing with it. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you don't vote the negative, uh, the, the, the standard that can be related to the negative, you would not receive uh, the point of the vote within the environment. So, for example, if uh, you have scored a national comment the standard, can but uh, you have a technical comment that you vote negative, 
and uh, all the national committee thinks uh, like you, all the standards receive a ne negative vote during the inquiry. So there is a possibility mm -hmm. that can mm -hmm. be released. Mm -hmm. Three more minutes for six more slides. I'll do my best. <laughs> if we go to publications, uh, so CCMC finalizes the text, but we will not publish without approval from the TC or at least from the Czech secretary and the chair. So we will do the editing and uh, we will send it to you for validation. But if you don't reply, we publish what we have. Mm -hmm. For amendments, if you want to make amendments, it's the same as for European standards. You need a new work item request and uh, it follows the same procedure. A corrigendum can be done, but we do not promote issuing of corrigenda too much because we think that you should have a good look at your documents and you do because it's rare that we have a, a a request for a corrigendum, but we only make corrigenda if it is really a mistake that can lead to the incorrect or unsafe use of the European standard. And if that is the case, we want you to tell us that that is the case, and we want you to give a reason, and then we can issue a corrigenda. And then the maintenance, that is the five years old, so you need to decide what you want to do with the standard. The case of the common modifications. Voilà. The common modifications follow the same route as uh, the European standard. Mm -hmm. You have there the information from the internal regulations. More information is on BOSS. Mm -hmm. You also have a link to the matrix of responsibility. That is a document that says who does what and when. So role for the chairman, role for the convener, role for the secretary, role for CCMC. Then there's a link to ISO IEC guide uh, 21.1. Then the common, but will you cover it in more detail, Catherine? No, no, but I can do this part now. It's just to tell that um, if you do a common modifications, whether, I mean, to adapt your standard to uh, the European market, if you are in phase, meaning that if the Senelec TC secretary send us the European elements, or I mean, you know, the, your pages, before the CDV, two weeks before the CDV, we are super happy, and we will dispatch them at the same time as the CDV. So we will have the ENIC and the Amendment 11, because common modifications are always Amendment 11, and we will dispatch it and send it to inquiry at the same time as it is sent to CDV. So, really in phase. You do not need to send us any new work item because we will get everything together. So at national level, when uh, a member will vote, they will directly see, ah, it's EN, ENIC 123 and ENIC 123 and the Amendment 11. So they, it's, it's really, it's clear. Um, that's why the contact, let's say, between the TC secretary and CCMC, I mean, let's say the uh, project manager is super important so that we know that you tell us here, yeah, we're, we're ready, or we're almost ready, we're going to send you that uh, as soon as we can. As said, the two work items will progress in parallel. Um, and yes, any common modification will be in an amendment 11. Now, the important thing is, I'm, I'm not calling the right document, but voilà. uh, if you are not in phase, meaning as the example that you mentioned, that okay, we might have issues, we have a meeting a bit later than the launch of the CDV, then if you are not in line, let's say in phase, then the TC secretary needs to launch a new work item for the common modification. And you need to tell us that you're a bit delayed, that the timing will not be the same, so that we can, for instance, suspend or let's say put on hold the publication of the ENIC until the common mods are ready. We do not like to suspend, you know, and put on hold the publication of standards, but we can wait for the publication of the Amendment 11. So, um, but yeah, this is written, and therefore you need to uh, send us um, a new work item sheet. What is important for the Senelec Technical Committee is really to, um, to, to, of course, follow the, the work program of the Senelec Technical Committee, and 
for your info, you are informed each time. In fact, uh, we have a CD, an IEC CD, which is linked to legislation. We will inform the TC secretary, say, hey, my friend, we know that there is um, a CD at IEC, which is going in parallel and which is linked to, to, um, to legislation. So please send us your European elements as soon as you can and two weeks before the CDV, if possible. If not, please tell us and we'll adjust. So that's the situation. And I believe that this is until where you wanted to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Catherine. No, 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 we are not at the end. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, we're nearly finished because this slide I will not cover. <laughs> it will be for someone else tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. It's not that it would on one. It's yeah. really topic it's of someone tomorrow. else. Uh, technical specification, technical report, not. A workshop agreement, we already discussed it. So it's uh, an agreement amongst interested parties. It can be even, it's even open to non Europeans. And it has followed procedures at uh, Sen or Senelec. It has a maximum lifetime of six years. And this is just to inform you that there is a, a tool for you to get started. So internal regulations part three are on the writing of standards. There's on both a template for your draft standards to use when you write standards that contains all the elements like styles, headings, and the content layout. 